Donald Trump's campaign strategy, of which we helped execute on the ground in some of these states, was that, guys, don't spend your time knocking on doors about a suburban soccer mom who's weighing her options. Instead, because that takes nine contacts to try to get her. Nine points of contact on average. Conversations, discussions, and they could be 30 minutes on it. Instead, Charlie Kirk left Chris Cuomo and Patrick Bet David totally speechless as he laid out how Donald Trump hacked the 2024 election with a game-changing strategy. The way he explained it could seriously shift the future of political campaign. Let's watch it together. Turning point, go spend your time in very Republican areas where there are non-registered or what we call disengaged voters. People that like Trump, like his worldview. For example, the bro vote, right? And so this is where we spent our time and we, we harvested, not ballot harvested, but we harvested in a very, very powerful way. At Arizona State University, for example, we registered thousands of young men to vote in fraternities. And that was way easier than us going to try to win over swing voters. And we did a little bit of that. But generally, the Trump campaign was brilliant because they threw the Republican consultant playbook out. The Republican consultant playbook was spend all your time on the middle, on those like middle 15 percent swing voters and go all in. Mm. Trump campaign said, why don't we just make our base bigger? Why don't we just make the people who love us the most? And so what they looked at was demographics. Mm -hmm. And they realized if we can make the electorate 3 percent more masculine – and do and by the way, they were so smart Bro, to do this. This is Susie. Is this this is Susie and James Blair and uh, La Savita, and they were so smart because they said, "Wait a second, what is more important than race? Whether or not you're a man or a woman actually dictates your political affiliation, affiliation far more of a correlation than your race." Mm. So they de-emphasized racial politics and they emphasized more of a masculine machismo approach. And boy, did it work! And not only did it work, you're running up against a woman, so it's easier to kind of make that argument. And so, so I don't mean to monopolize no, the time. No, th this is really interesting. Re keep going. And, and so what the Trump campaign then did, the, the Republican consultant playbook that Carl Rove basically authored was everything is about high propensity. So there's two types of voters, high propensity and low propensity voters. A high propensity voter is typically college educated, lives in the suburbs. You know, they, they, watch, they watch Chris, they watch CNN. They have an income over $100,000 a year. They have two kids and a picket fence and they go to soccer games and they don't commit crimes. You know, that, that type of demo, right? High propensity voters is where the Republican Party has always been focused. Okay, those were, but Trump came and he said, no, 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 we're going to focus on low propensity voters. If you enjoy this type of content, please hit the like button and subscribe. The welder, the electrician, the carpenter, the police officer, or the person that's just not registered to vote, where I thought that Donald Trump was going to win, and I wasn't as confident as anybody else, okay, was when I started to see the voter registration surge across the country in the summer before this last summer. P new people that were registering to vote we're registering at a clip three to one versus Democrat in Pennsylvania for the first time ever wow. for the, for, in Pennsylvania for the first time ever. We had every county in Pennsylvania. We were out registering Democrats for the first time ever. Now, mind you, what Josh Shapiro did as governor of Pennsylvania is he put in a thing called motor voter, which means you automatically get registered to vote. They thought that was going to help Democrats when you get your license, when you get your driver's license. Re it helped Republicans because of lower. Pro Think about who's not registered to vote. It, it's typically lower propensity voters and P PBD. Here's the, here's the, here's the kicker. Where do these people get their information? Lower propensity voters get information on TikTok. Mm -hmm. They're not watching CNN. They're not sitting. You know why? These folks are darn tired by the time they get home. They're not turning on cable news. They're watching NFL football games. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are not going to be able to quote to you, Marbury. Respect they're the not, strategy. by well, the way. It's also this. Yeah, it, it's also the phone. So what Donald Trump campaign did is they hacked the 2024 election, not in a way that people would think, where they said, wait a second, everyone has a supercomputer That's in the right-hand right. pocket. Why are we worried about what CNN is saying or MSNBC is saying? Why don't we win the information war? And then finally, wow. the kicker, they said, why don't we go on the most ambitious, over-the-top, low-propensity voter communication strategy on Theo Vaughn, Joe Rogan, Nelk Boys, you know, Logan Paul, influencer strategies, right? To, and so what they said is there's this whole reservoir and the final kicker, my mandate at Turning Point was very simple. Charlie turned Trump supporters into voters. And that's what we did. Trump's 2024 strategy is a clever pivot that challenges traditional campaigning norms. Instead of going after swing voters, people who need tons of attention and repeated messaging to be convinced his team focused on expanding the base with low propensity voters. These are people who generally like Trump's approach, but haven't been politically active or registered to vote. It's a strategy designed to create a surge in voter turnout by tapping into segments that haven't traditionally been targeted by Republicans like young men in fraternities or blue collar workers. What's really interesting here is how this strategy shifts away from the typical focus on persuasion and instead aims at activation. The campaign focused on people who were already sympathetic to Trump, but just needed that extra nudge to show up and vote. 
This move throws the old Republican playbook out the window, which usually focuses on moderate or high propensity voters, the suburban professionals, for example, who often need a lot of engagement and persuasion. Trump's team instead banked on connecting with the bro vote and other groups who may feel overlooked by conventional politics. Their emphasis on social media platforms, influencers, and alternative news sources also shows a deep understanding of where these voters actually get their information. Knowing that this demographic isn't tuning into CNN, but is likely catching snippets on TikTok watching Joe Rogan, or following popular online figures, means the campaign tailored its messaging to platforms where these potential voters naturally spend their time by winning the information. Noir in this way, they cut through the noise of traditional media and spoke directly to their base in a way that felt genuine in essence. Trump's 2024 approach is about rethinking the core question of who to target and how. Instead of winning over everyone in the middle, he focused on making his own base bigger, more engaged, and ready to vote. This tactic could redefine how campaigns approach undecided or disengaged voters in future elections, emphasizing digital engagement and targeted outreach over traditional door-knocking and mainstream media. A coverage, it's a bold data-driven strategy that just might change the landscape of political campaigning for good.